Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus and today we're talking about the concept of dreams and dream-based interaction communication with people who have crossed over. And this is one of the weirdest and more most complicated subjects and it comes up sometimes on this channel because I think most of us have dreams. A few of us don't have dreams. Uh, some people literally go to sleep and they, they, they've never had dreams. Kind of reminds me of uh, there was this old TV show, Third Rock from the Sun. And the premise is you have these aliens coming to live in America, but they uh, had never experienced dreams until they finally do. And then that's like a special episode because they each have this wild and wacky dream experience for the first time. Uh, so some people are kind of like that. They don't, you know, they don't have any dreams. And I don't really understand fully why that happens. But most of us do. And most of the time, dreams are very much not some kind of a supernatural experience. You dream you're going back to school again, uh, and you're in your underwear, and you have to do a presentation. You have a dream that you have to go to the dentist, and that's about it. Uh, fears, anxieties, things like that made manifest. But a lot of times, sometimes dreams will veer into something very different, and it will seem like there's more to what's going on. So I have a couple of theories about what the most common types of dream-based contact experiences are, how it happens, what happens, and um, what is being facilitated through what we call the other side when we're having a dream contact experience, how this differs from the astral experience that we talk about typically on this channel. Uh, before we go any further, you are watching Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, where we talk about some of these complex topics. And um, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, and punch the like button, share the video, all that stuff helps the channel out. In case you're wondering why I was distracted, there was somebody walking by in my field of vision. Kind of, I, I, if, if you've ever seen that um, video with Christian Bale when he went crazy because there was somebody in his field of vision, I guess that's me, except I'm not going crazy. I'm just distracted when you have somebody in a big, colorful shirt walking by. It's like, wait, who's this guy? Is he about to walk in front of me? Like, what's going on? So I've, I've thought about this a bit because sometimes... Even I will have these experiences where I cannot quite classify it as an astral experience, and I never, I never obtain a full level of lucidity. However, I will have, uh, for example, somebody who is a deceased loved one, such as uh, one of my parents, or my brother, or my grandmother, or my grandfather, somebody appearing in a dream, and we'll be having some kind of a scenario or an adventure happening, but I just don't think this is a real experience happening on the other side, and yet I get the feeling that it's really my deceased loved one. And so what's going on here and what's happening? Well, to understand this, we have to consider uh, first what dreams tend to be. So in my best estimation, a dream is a an experience with your higher self. It is what we call our subconscious could also be referred to as our higher self. And the higher self is operating omnipresently behind the scenes and multidimensionally behind the scenes, and yet it's always interconnected to us. And in many ways, it's almost as if this lesser mind fractures and becomes an individual that is separate and distinct from the higher overarching version of us that exists in many more places than just this world. So what seems to happen is that we developed a relationship with this higher self and we begin to want to explore and discover things in a safe virtual environment. And then that's what dreaming is. And on the upper scale of this, it involves creating a personalized reality. Similar, again, to that film Inception. This is stuff that we have access to. Not only do the more talented dreamers able to do that in this world, but... Oh, boy, we have a lot of wind coming in. That's the challenge of making these things outside. You never know when the wind is going to come and just, like, poke a hole in whatever you're saying. It comes out with all that static in the audio, which bites big time but all right it's calming down now 
So if you're in a dream, you get to control the wind, you control the weather, you control everything about the experience. If you want to learn or do something that you don't normally have access to, it's kind of like what we used to call like the debug menu. If you're playing some old video game where you can hack into it and play around and mix things up and change things and do whatever you want. So to give you an example of this, not too long ago, I, I don't know why, but I was asleep and I was pondering, you know, just, just how traumatic and terrible it must be to pass away during a, a tsunami, right? And so I was thinking about this and it's like I had a conversation with my higher self and my higher self told me, hey Cyrus, if you really want to know what it's like to be a victim of a tsunami, I can show you, but this is going to be a pretty intense experience, and please, like, you know, call a safe word if you can't handle it. So I made I made that uh, agreement, and suddenly it's like I was placed into maybe somebody else's memory because it was like an underground garage, and there were people standing around scared, and suddenly this wall of water was pouring in from above and, and rushing toward us, and the, it was flipping the cars over, and everybody knew they were going to die. And before the water hit, I'm like, time out, this is too much. And then my higher self was like, told you so. So that's an example of a scene being created. So um, that is kind of the truth behind what a dream typically is. is that That's why it tends to be such an unreality about it. And uh, sometimes it's almost like it's made through just spur of the moment thinking and creative thought. You know, you're just creating this and this and this and this and this and all kinds of stuff that's based sometimes not in an intelligent fashion, but it's just kind of like random stuff that your mind is creating. So what about the, these dream contact experiences? What's going on? Where do they come from? How are they being made? And are they, quote, real experiences? Well, they are real experiences, but I believe what's happening, and this is based upon my work, my research, dreaming is a ubiquitous thing. So there's always a, a, a division between what I sometimes call the overworld and the inner world. The overworld is where you exist right now. In this case, it's the overworld, physical cosmos, physical dimension. And I believe that there's an overworld astral dimension and astral cosmos and maybe many, many, many other types of layers and shared types of existences that we you know we get to experience with other people. This is a shared reality. That's the overworld. The inner world is going in inward and experiencing something that is unique to us, but it can also be unique to multiple people. Now, I believe one of the biggest hobbies that people, our, our loved ones have on that side is creating new and interesting environments in the dreamscape and being able to share that with other people. And according to my, my mom who passed away, people still dream on that side the old fashioned way by laying down and going into a sleep state. And so somebody will be laying down on that side, you know, sleeping on a couch. Even on the astral plane, as we call it, still, you know, with similar operating physics, and their consciousness will be displaced and have, having gone inward or maybe outward into some higher dimensional realm, but it, very possibly inward as well, being able to experience some kind of a unique dreamscape that they're creating or co-creating with somebody else. And so that's the big thing. It becomes possible to co-create an experience with a loved one. And this could be the easiest way that they can make contact with you on this world because you're, you're already asleep. And so I believe that most of these dream contact experiences are literally dreams being shared by them on that side and you on this side. You're asleep and in a way they're asleep also and your consciousness is meeting up with them together on that side and you're having an experience that is being generated together but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're literally doing these things. So if you find yourself with your deceased loved one fighting Godzilla or you know running uh, on some on some Dungeons and Dragons style adventure, and you're fighting goblins in a in a dungeon, doesn't mean that this is literally happening in what we call the astral plane. It means that you and your loved one have possibly created this scenario together, 
And you, one reason you're doing that is because your loved one knows that by doing this, there's a higher prob probability that you'll be able to remember the experience. Typically, when you are in the astral overworld, the other side, you don't bring back the memories unless you're having a legitimate astral projection experience. What your loved ones want from you, most of all, is that you can bring the memories back with you so that they, you can remember them and know they're still around. So the next time you're having a dream, if you can get conscious, if you become lucid, ask your loved one is this a shared dream that i'm having with you and probably what they're going to say is yeah we're creating this together so let's have fun and enjoy it and this could also be your chance even in a dream to ask them about their life now on that side what they're doing and how they are and you'll get legit answers because you're still with your loved one even if it's in a kind of virtual Star Trek holodeck style experience you're still with them and you can still talk to them in this way even if you're not quite on what we call the astral plane you'll know if you're on the astral plane because you're in a world that you cannot just shape it using your mind there's many 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 people there you can identify as real and tangible people and uh, that there, there's a few other ways to check it out to to test as well Bullman talks about this in his books I talk about it in my books and there is that distinction and dreaming therefore it's the natural way that we create inner worlds it's part of who we are kind of as mini creators as mini versions of God itself and it's the main hobby people have in other worlds is just like inception doing shared dreaming well if you like this video consider buying a couple of my books like understanding life after death or the afterlife and beyond or you can sign up for classes or coaching i help people out teaching them how to have out-of-body experiences how to contact their deceased loved ones how to analyze their life from a spiritual point of view and this helps keep this show going and um, I don't charge much money, just basically a donation thing. So if you want to get involved with something like that, then please contact me personally. You can do this at afterlifetopics.com off of through this channel or through my Facebook, uh, Cyrus Kirkpatrick. And you can join the group as well, uh, Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. Well, uh, that's it for this video and I'll catch you guys on another video about this time tomorrow and there you have it that's kind of the truth about dreaming the way i see it and contact experiences how to make sense of this complicated subject but don't take my word for it love the stuff for theories it's not gospel it's not dogma all right i'll talk to you guys next time